Hey everybody, today I wanted to go ahead and do a video about the meat target. Now I know I've done a few of these tests uh, on bullets and I'm gonna I'm about to be filming the gold dot one but it's kind of a two-part video. Uh, this is gonna be a separate one from my actual test but uh, I guess you could say this is uh, gonna be a little bit of a before and after but it's a way of uh, describing the meat target and uh, why I chose it. Now Everybody uh, has probably seen the uh, Paul Harrell's channel where he does ballistics tests where uh, he uses the meat target where uh, he does it a little bit differently. I'm kind of doing it in the older fashion, but uh, basically you, you have two layers of something, maybe three. Uh, he uses like a leather jacket or whatever that represents skin, which personally, unless you're soaking that leather jacket, it's not really representative of skin because it's dry. We don't have dry skin unless you're dehydrated and dead. Uh, so um, maybe soaked pig ears or something like that, but we have a lot of water in us. So, you know, stuff from the store, like I'm using like uh, uh, pork chops uh, and then uh, uh, thick pork chops, really. You want really uh, uh, thick pork chops and then uh, to represent skin, in my opinion, it represents skin and uh, you know the beginning muscle between that and the bone and then you have pork ribs and then you have watermelon to act as uh, some internal tissues that kind of makes up for the lack of water inside this meat in my opinion and then you have more pork ribs on the back and what this is supposed to really simulate is uh, if it's going to hit bone it's going to hit bone and bone can cause deformation in bullets and it can actually cause them to go off their intended trajectory and we've seen that with a couple of these tests so they don't exactly stay on their intended trajectory like if you're shooting it straight with like a low um, low weight nine millimeters if they hit bone they can immediately redirect and be deflected same thing happens with 556 it's a common occurring problem now the reason I like uh, I like this target system instead of uh, clear ballistics is it's more of an accurate representation showing bone it's actually shooting meat uh, now clear ballistics and uh, other things you're basically fighting with inches whereas here it's a pass or fail for the most part it's gonna expand or it's not and even if it doesn't expand is it going to exceed into you know these layers here in the back basically the bullet catch how much is it gonna go into this bullet catch and you know how well did it expand and most of the time you're seeing deformed bullets from hitting bone and <clears throat> that's the thing most of the time bullets are hitting bone afterwards and that's what we saw like with HSTs they get really mangled um, and therefore they lose their penetration which is already low to begin with and uh, they don't really end up performing that well one of the best performers is the uh, Golden Sabres but uh, in this test that I'm going to be filming, which you'll have to see separately, I'm going to be doing a 230 grain gold dot, and uh, this should be interesting because it's designed to go through barriers and uh, stay together. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and shoot this and uh, show you the results of it, but before I do that, let me go ahead and get a close-up of what the uh, what this meat target looks like. So, bear with me for a second. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. So, without messing up my little system too much, as you see here, I have it all duct taped up and I have it kind of out of the way of the meat. Uh, so you got your uh, pork chops, I got them double thick here, and then I have pork ribs. Now the reason I have them double thick is you have a pector pectoral muscle and then you also have a uh, um, skin. So here's the thing, with skin, I know the uh, Ziploc bag doesn't really help all that much, but um, it can kind of throw it off a little bit, but uh, the reason I have this double thick and then I have pork chops, which is it's got meat over the bone. Is skin? If you know anything about clear ballistics, it's a, it, or any ballistics gel, they say that uh, skin would represent it, the force it takes to get through skin is about four inches of ballistics gel. And here, with this meat being what it is, being basically its own muscle tissue, dense muscle tissue, it's about the same thing. So. Um, you kind of got to compensate for that and get it nice and dense and uh, packed tightly. So uh, having a double layer of this, not a bad idea. Most people aren't um, built up too much in their pecs uh, for the high center chest. Uh, if I wanted to do a representation of the sternum, I could get uh, some really big 
um, like pork shoulders, like a shoulder blade or something like that uh, from the pork shoulder, and that would actually work pretty well uh, to represent a sternum shot, which will really screw up your bullets. And then, of course, I got a nice dense watermelon, which uh, if the bullet's expanded and it hasn't lost too much velocity by hitting the bone, it'll typically chew this up pretty well. Uh, may not have reached full expansion until it actually reaches this, which the high water content would cause it to expand if it hasn't been clogged already. And then, of course, you got pork ribs on the back. So typically, if a target is going to be uh, shot uh, and you've got um, a straight-on shot, typically that length um, from the front to the back is not going to be very much. So you could actually end up having the round stopping in the back skin, which this would actually represent, in my opinion, because here's the thing. The back skin, again, acts like four inches of gel. So when you're doing all these little equations and stuff, you're not accounting for bone, you're not accounting for skin. So you got to basically take eight inches off to see if it would actually over-penetrate even on a straight-on shot. So... Uh, in a sideways shot going through an arm, uh, going through skin, then into muscle, maybe hitting a wrist bone, then going through muscle, and then going through skin, then going through more skin to reach to get into the chest, and then hitting rib bones or something like that. That's a lot of uh, stuff to go through. So if you don't have anything that's really deep penetrating, you're stressing the bullet out a lot. And therefore, uh, lower expansion is typically something that you see with bullets that perform pretty well. Um, Hydroshocks, when they would actually uh, work, they typically expanded very little, but they got good deep penetration, and they actually had good street records when they would expand, but they didn't expand all that much. So anyways, uh, with these two layers of clothing, this is a, it's about autumn here, and you can probably hear the wind blowing. I just have a t-shirt on the front and, uh, and a hoodie. So this is typical, you know, clothing for this season. So uh, with all that said, that's how I have it lined up here. I'm using the front pocket so it's adding another layer here to uh, what I've got to shoot and so I'm going to bring this down a little bit to kind of help me indicate where it's going so a little behind the scenes on how I have to kind of make this work and then I have to find the pork ribs and make sure everything is lined up that way I'm getting a, a straight shot uh, through all this medium. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and get to filming this, and uh, I'll show you guys uh, everything afterwards. Okay, so I just shot this uh, target, and you can see the watermelon juices are flowing out, so I'm going to get all this stuff off the table, and uh, then we're going to go through it, and I'm going to show you how I uh, basically look for it. So first things first, let's go ahead and adjust the camera, and first thing I like to do is check the bullet trap, and I shot it actually pretty quickly and I missed one of the rounds I felt this and uh, I missed one of the rounds but three of them actually went into the pork ribs and uh, might have set them off a little bit but they went in kind of low so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shoot a couple more rounds into the actual pork uh, pork chops Okay, so went ahead and shot some more stuff in, or some more rounds, and it went directly into the pork chop, so that's good. That'll give a pretty good, ac accurate representation. So starting from the back here, checking the bullet trap. I'm not seeing anything that penetrated through, so that's a good thing. Uh, basically, it got caught. They probably all expanded, so I'm going to go ahead and get this onto the ground. So... <clears throat> Now we're going to start from the back. I can feel the lumps, and I'm going to go ahead and move the camera so you can kind of see what I'm working with here. So, pardon me a sec, and in case we get anything that falls, you can see how it works here. So I can already feel them. They're, none of them penetrated through. However, we did get little stains here and there, and yeah, I got hammer bite, but... It didn't penetrate, but it did leave indents in here like it was trying. So here we go. That we got three, and then looks like we've got a fourth that's actually stuck. 
in the actual beef rib. I saw a little reflection and yeah, it's stuck in the beef rib. So, yep, it fell down in the front. Yep. And one was stuck in the front of the watermelon. So I think what happened is these are uh, two of them that actually um, uh, missed the pork chop and went directly into the watermelon. Typically, water is going to stop these bullets a lot faster. So we've got one more bullet to find. And I'm going to have to dig through this. And you guys are going to come along for the ride. But basically, they all went through this area here, it looks like. Um, so... Let's see here, that one, yep, yep, it got stopped in the, in the ribs, and yep, this is what I would classify as not a good thing, um, personally, but you can see, without cleaning this off too extremely, this is pretty good expansion, but the problem is that it was probably going too fast to actually penetrate all the way through. It could have uh, something to do with the density of the pork chops, but I think the rounds that actually went through was either uh, the last round uh, from the four shots or one of the ones that, uh, the one that missed it, but they were basically all in line. They hit the watermelon, hit the back ribs, and one of the rounds, as you can see here, it did hit boom because it flattened out the side, so, yeah, this is what it can do. It can it can basically take away a lot of that energy and throw it off a little bit. This one did not expand all that much. Um, this probably was not one of the ones that, uh, this probably wasn't one that hit the watermelon uh, only. Uh, this one probably hit rib. Um, may have hit a pork chop or something like that, but it may have been clogged. We don't really know. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and film uh, for my other video, but this is a, what you can see if you, when you test this. This is a pretty good accurate representation, so 40 caliber uh, seems to be on top in my estimation. Okay, so the meat target showed that the 45 caliber uh, gold dot through the through the meat target or out of the 1911 did not perform as well as say the 40 caliber or even some of the 9 millimeter cheaper rounds but the key uh, feature that we actually saw with the other rounds was they were going faster and they did not uh, they did not expand very much so what we saw is absolute uh, absolute effect of the bone taking away an already slow velocity and then it expanded a lot which can be good for uh, basically affecting the vital organs more because it's only it's not the hydrostatic shock that's going to do much of anything except uh, in a brain shot but even then it's so low that it's actually not going to affect the medulla without a straight on shot so which is you're trying to take out the brain stem and the connecting tissues with the cerebellum but anyways <clears throat> with all that said um it's good for, uh, the expansion is good if it can reach the vital organs, like taking a back shot, like some police uh, have shot people in the back and it will go through the vital organs, hit them on the spine or whatever. That is not really a test of the bullet's effectiveness. You could get something that penetrates like four inches and, and be able to have effect with that. But it's more designed to take a straight on shot and it seems like the gold dot is more meant for straight up muscle tissue rather than being stressed out by bone. Uh, the ones that seem to perform the best are things like XTPs, some of the more generic uh, hollow points that may be moving a tad slower, um, but they don't expand very much. And uh, that's a common uh, thing that I see. Now through, through clear ballistics or ordnance gel, it shows that the gold dot basically um, it penetrates really well uh, out of the 1911 and it, it's it's just uh, almost perfect expansion but uh, with these bullets you're not seeing perfect expansion that's kind of the thing about the meat target is it stresses the bullets out kind of like it's going to do in the body because rarely do doctors end up pulling out uh, these hull points and have perfect expansion you're going to see 
that they're not perfect, as I showed you earlier. They're going to have hip bone, they're not going to enjoy the ride through the gel. So gel is not a very good medium to show what a bullet is actually going to do in the real world. It's a representation of what it can do. I don't like to work on what it can do. I want to work on what it, what it will do when it's stressed out. And this is a good representation. You're getting bone, you're getting meat with a water content if you can help it and you base you get your clothing and everything but you can if you're going to do this test it's very inexpensive like uh, for here in Alaska it's more expensive it only cost me $12 for that rack of ribs which I cut in half and then uh, the pork chops cost me like eight bucks so that was 20 bucks right there and then I had the watermelon so it was like a $25 investment uh, for the five dollar uh, five or seven dollar watermelon or whatever <clears throat> so um, you know, it's really not that much of an investment to go ahead and do these tests yourselves if you wish. So and I would consider it, you do it yourself. And heck, if you have a YouTube account, put that on YouTube. The more data that we have, the more examples of these results that you, we have, the better I think people can make educated uh, decisions on their carry loads. Does that make the, uh, the 1911 or the 45 gold dot a bad choice? No. However, I'm going to test some more in the future and see if we can't get one that will perform better. And I will stay um, consistent with uh, doubled up uh, pork chops uh, to represent a good pectoral muscle and maybe skin and watermelon and the pork ribs on the back and the front. So, uh, and also the uh, clothing layer, which could have had an effect on the expansion. So anyways, uh, kind of draw it short. That was the results. Go ahead and leave a comment below on what you think and uh, thanks a lot for watching.